Hello and welcome to CI in Under 5. My name is John Weezy, and in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to the transaction churn model that we have built into Customer Insights. So we have our normal data set, and uh, you can see I've already done the subscription churn model, but um, you'll also find out if we go back to Discover that there is a transactional churn model. So this is the uh, you know one-time purchase of products you know what's the rate of transactional churn are they going to come back or not so here we're going to go ahead and select transactional it tells us that we have to have uh, the purchase logs now uh, we'll need an id a date and a value uh, so we're going to go ahead and click get started and here we have uh, the ability to bring our stuff in first we're going to give it a name so we'll go ahead and name it and I'm just going to use a very simple out of box e commerce transaction churn. And then, of course, we need to tell it what we want the entity called. Uh, so, this is what it's going to be saved at in our list of entities. I'm going to go ahead and click next. We have to pick the time frame uh, that we use to identify if a customer is going to churn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to uh, 60 days. And the churn uh, definition so, you know, they've They've been defined as churning if they haven't made a purchase in the last 60 days. So I'm going to say 60 days as well. And we're going to say next. All right, so now that we've defined what churn means, we need to give it the data to look at. So we're going to click on Add Data. And the entity here is our e-commerce purchases. So we're going to look at specifically our e-commerce churn rate. And the transaction ID is going to be the purchase ID. The date is when it was purchased. The value is our total price. The unique product ID, we have a product ID to add there. And then we don't have a data that tells if it was a return. If it was a return, then we could, um, or if there we had data signifying if it was a return or a purchase, then we'd want to include that so that we were only looking at purchases and uh, also looking at if it was returned. Next. And here it should fill in a lot of this for us, but we want to make sure it's right. So we want our contact ID, which matches up with our uh, from our purchases to our contacts. And everything looks good there. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. And we're all set. So the next step is to go ahead and choose any activities, which we are not going to do. And so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. I'm going to set this to Monthly. We could choose Weekly if we wanted to rerun it every week but monthly is good enough click next and then click save and run okay so we can see that it has been queued we will now just wait for this to go ahead and finish i'm going to pause the video and then come back as soon as it's done okay we're back and you can see here that the uh, out of box transactional churn model has completed successfully and if we open this up we will see um a lot, a lot of the similar if you watch the video on the subscription churn um, it's the same setup here with the scoring of a b c and then you can see the different chunks so we have about uh what is this about 231 people that are 59 to 65 percent likely to churn and we got about 259 that are 82 to 88 percent likely. So um, you can see the distri distribution of the likelihood to churn uh, transaction-wise uh, across my data set. And then I can also see the most influential factors. So number of products purchased is the biggest one. Uh, many people have probably only purchased one product, and therefore their the likelihood to churn is higher. And the frequency and so on. So uh, a lot of great stuff you can get here. You can, um, there are no logs because it's only been executed once. <laughs> uh, we can go back and edit the model and so on. So that is the transactional churn out of box model. Hope you enjoyed it and tune in for more episodes as we release them.